Greetings again. And this is Pastor May J.G. Gilbert from Piney Hill Baptist Church. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for you joining us again this morning at our Sunday School Hour. We are coming to you broadcasting live on Facebook from the On the Wall Ministries here in Alta Vista, Virginia. We just are so thankful for you joining in. Those who are on our conference line, we do say good morning to you, and we thank God for you joining us this morning. And and we're just so thankful for having this opportunity to come. And, and as we come this morning, we hope that you are doing well. And we pray that uh, you have health and wealth and, and fitness and all of those good things that God has desired for us. And we pray for the bereaved families uh, in our church family. We uh, pray uh, for the Richardson family. We pray for each and every one. Uh, and we ask that you would just continue to pray for our first responders and all of our EMS and our doctors, nurses, our CNAs, and all of those essential workers that are still on the line working for us to try to keep us uh, supplied with all the necessities that we have uh, need of during this uh, pandemic. And uh, things are still happening in our world and in our nation. Pray for our nation. Pray from the White House all the way to the church house. Pray uh, that we would might come together in peace and be able to uh, lay aside all of our differences whereby we can be able to uh, be that people that God desires us to be. So we're so thankful this morning. We got a wonderful lesson, uh, Call to Follow, Call to Follow, January 10th, uh, this morning, Lesson 6 in our commentary lesson. Our scripture this morning is coming out of the Gospel of Luke, 5th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Uh, hopefully in our lesson this morning... Uh, we'll be able to glean a few points out of our lesson this morning to be able to recite uh, the plot twist that uh, goes on in our lesson this morning. Uh, Jesus is uh, trying to get those disciples uh, called and, and then give them a, a, a mission statement where they'll be able, be able to go out and to be able to make fishes, uh, uh, fishes of men. We are going out to... Uh, gain and, and to uh, restore the kingdom of God. And the only way we can do that is, is to go out and let others know about the goodness of the Lord. And I, also in our lesson today, explain the nature of Jesus calling those uh, uh, calling of, of those fishermen. And he said that uh, they would be able to go out and, and to regain all of those lost sheep and all of those who have uh, strayed away. Then write a statement uh, to rephrase uh, our call to the ministry, our call to evangelism. Each one of us have a call on our lives to be able to expand the kingdom of God, and it takes more than just preachers and teachers and ministers. It takes all of us to be able to go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus Christ is Lord. So in our uh, lesson this morning, our scripture text, uh, it reads, and it came to pass that, as the people pressed on him uh, to hear the word of God, he stood on the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, and, and the fishermen was going out of them and were washing their nets. And they entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch thou out into the deep, and let down thy nets for a draught. Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have nothing, and taken nothing, and nevertheless, at that word, I will let down the net. And when he had done, there enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, and they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, uh, down on his, he fell down on his knees, uh, Jesus' knees, and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was astonished at all that uh, they were with him, and the, at the draught of the fishes that they had taken. And so was also James and John and sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all, and they followed him. 
Our lesson this morning is called to follow. We are all called to follow Jesus. Early uh, Christians were not called Christians. They were called followers of the way, followers of Christ, followers of him uh, calling men unto repentance, as John did, uh, and also to call them uh, to redemption through the blood of Jesus. So we're so uh, wonderfully blessed this morning to have this lesson where we are uh, giving us a glimpse into uh, our calling. Why has God called us? Hopefully this morning, uh, even in our morning message, we'll have a glimpse of that in our lesson this morning. In our introduction, it talks about the power of children's songs. And uh, he said he was raised and he was uh, taught these children's songs. And these children's songs always brought back to his remembrance uh, of the things that would keep him grounded and, 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 and have something to bring back to be able to remember how he first came unto the Lord. Uh, then he says, generations later, now his grandchildren and children, uh, their three-year-old granddaughter was able to uh, memorize because of those songs that they were taught in Sunday school or Bible study or whatever uh, they were learning them at. But he showed that my understanding became of the fish of men was quite limited when I memorized that song. He didn't quite understand his calling when he was reading that song, but the song did help him to be able to remember that God has a calling on all of our lives. But he said, I believe those lyrics made a positive and a permanent impression on him developing his heart and his mind to be able to uh, realize that God has called him also to become those fishermen of men. So today as we study the passage in which Jesus called men to follow him. Uh, we didn't know exactly, uh, they didn't know exactly what it meant, but but uh, they, they were able to uh, renew and to re-inspire their sense that Jesus was called you to something that was eternally significant. So all of us have a a, a, a tremendous calling upon our lives and, and each one of us in our families, in our homes, in our communities, in our local churches, we have a calling to be able to uh, reach out and to be able to catch those uh, lost souls that are out in the world today. So we're, we're so blessed. In our lesson context, uh, in our lesson, uh, Luke 5, uh, it, it's uh, looking at this story that Jesus is calling uh, those first three uh, into the uh, discipleship of following him. Uh, in our lesson, we talked about uh, shallow water teaching and pressed to the crowd. Verse 1 says in our lesson today, And it came to pass that was the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. See, uh, I think in our message this morning, as we're going to preach this morning, uh, we said, what was it about Jesus that so many people followed him. Uh, was it his healing? Was it his feeding uh, of, of, of the hungry? Was it uh, all of his miracles that he did? What was it about Jesus that so many followed him? He said in our lesson this morning that it came to pass they pressed upon him to hear the word of God. See, if you preach the word of God, you don't have to have any other gimmicks. You don't have to have any other things to, uh, to keep people in church. Preach and teach the word of God. That word has the power to do things all on its own. We don't have to add or take away from anything else. Preach the word and teach the word of God, and it will draw. So he said that they pressed to him. Not, not to get food, not to get miracles, not to get healed, but they pressed him to be able to hear the word of God. See, uh, last week we talked Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and, and he gave that great announcement of him being the coming of the Messiah, fulfilling the, uh, the, the prophecy of Isaiah. And, and here he's on the lake of Gennesaret uh, where he's teaching out of the ship. He said that uh, he was teaching and, and they pressed him to be able to hear that word of God. So uh, he had healed many people. Uh, he had done many works. But because of the power of the word of God, they were pressing to hear that word. They said not only did they want to hear the word from God, 
They wanted to hear the word of God. See, you want to hear the word of God. I, I just don't want to come to church to hear sweet sound and innuendos and cliches. And a lot of times our sermons got a lot of sweet innuendos and a lot of sweet uh, cliches in them. But it has to be the word of God. I want to hear from God and I want to hear of God. Uh, from God lets me know what he has for my life. Of God lets me know the character of God. I need to know the character of God in order for me to be able to uh, simulate that in my own life. He emulates everything that you and I would strive to be in life. So that's what God wants us to be. Verse 2 says in our lesson, And he saw two ships standing by the lake, and fishermen were going out of them, and they were washing their nets. And one of the things, I, I, I did a sermon a few uh, a months ago, uh, uh, it, it talks about uh, fishing in shallow waters. And, 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 and they were fishing, and they had fished all night, and they hadn't caught anything, and they were washing the nets. And one of the things I was concerned about, if you hadn't caught any fish while you're still washing the nets, but I understand that you might have debris that is in the ocean and the salt water, you have to clean your nets to make sure that they're ready for the next time you go out to fish. So they were there, uh, had given up all hope. They had thought that they had lost all chance of ever catching anything. So they had given up and they had uh, gone to the shore out of their boats and they began to wash down that sometime in the ministry when things don't happen this fast. I've been guilty of it myself. If things did not happen at the same speed that I thought it should have happened, I've given up. I've given up and I'm ready to go in and wash my nets. I was ready to, to, to take my hands off and to sit down a while and, and give up on it. But God, is, he doesn't want us to give up. He wants us to be able to stay vigilant and forever pressing toward that mark of the high calling of Christ that he has in our life. And, and, and always there is somebody out there that needs our help. You know, uh, we hear at the store, uh, we minister to people all day long, and people come in and minister to us. But somehow, God's providence brings people into our lives, brings people into our store and our business, people that need help, people that are needing prayer, people that just need a word from God every now and then. See, God will put people in your way so that you can be able to uh, uh, say a word, to be able to put hope and, and, and a little bit of uh, 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 joy into their life every now and then. God does things by his own providence to bring people your way. So don't give up. Don't, don't go in and start washing your nets and, and you want to give up on trying to catch what God has sent your way. Verse 3 says that, and he entered in one of the ships, uh, uh, which was Simon's, and he, he prayed him that he should cast, uh, uh, that he was thrust out a little from the land. That's part A of that chapter, of that verse 3 in our lesson. So he entered that ship and he prayed that he was thrust out. See, this, the, this was not the first time that, uh, that, that, that Jesus had met Simon. You remember he came to Simon's house and he healed Simon's mother-in-law. Uh, and and that she had a great fever. And many others were brought there with illnesses and uh, with the demonization and all of those other things. But Christ came and, and he, he, he asked Peter that, that he would be able to uh, thrust out a little from the land. The crowd had gotten so large uh, that Jesus had a hard time uh, getting to the point where they could hear him and see him. See, it's important that when you're talking to somebody that you talk to them face to face. So when, when you're speaking to somebody, uh, eye to eye contact is necessary. So what you need to do is to thrust out a little bit so that people can be aware of who they're speaking to and who uh, are speaking to them. So that's what's important. When you have uh, evangelism, meet people one-on-one. -on -one. I took a course. It was at uh, First Buffalo Baptist Church, and they had a workshop, and they called it one-on-one -on -one evangelism. See, we, we think that a lot of people are saved by uh, listening to uh, our Facebook message or listening to the message in the church, but most people are saved because of one-on-one -on -one evangelism. God wants us to, to be aware of that opportunity that we have to meet people where they are. Then we can minister to them one-on-one -on -one where we can uh, have prayer with them, we can touch them, and to be able to have eye-to-eye -eye contact so that we can be able to be more effective in reaching people 
uh, and to be able to teach them and to show our desire to be able to understand their situation. So one-on-one -on -one evangelism is the powerful way where each one of us are called. See, uh, uh, church, you got the preacher doing the preaching, you got the teacher doing the teaching, you, you know, you got the deacons doing their ministry, but when you get to one-on-one -on -one evangelism, all of us are called. God called all of us to be able to follow him. And in order for to do that, we can have that opportunity. I was looking at Proverbs, and Proverbs says, time and chance. You know, there's a time and a season for all things. Uh, that's the Ecclesiastes. But he said that in, in Proverbs, he said that time and chance comes to us all. See, God will give you a time and a chance to meet somebody one-on-one -on -one where you can be able to evangelize and teach and to preach and to proclaim the word of God. Jesus said last week, he's to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So that's what's so important for us to do. Don't lay it all on the preaching, the deacons and the ministers. Each one of us have a call to follow Jesus, but we have that opportunity, the time and a chance to be able to meet people where they are, to evangelize and proclaim that acceptable year of the Lord unto them, where they can be able to understand what God has for their life. Part B of that third verse says, and he sat down and taught them out of the ship. See, preaching is good, but every now and then, you need to come to Sunday school and Bible study, to sit down and teach people so that they can be aware. Sometimes the sermons get you excited, get your emotions all uplifted. But when you come to Sunday school, you in Bible study, you need to have that word of God being taught to you so that you can have a greater understanding of why you're all excited. We, we, we get excited because of our emotions, but you should be excited just by the word of God being taught. The word of God should, should get you so excited that you'll be able to go out and, and look, I'm so glad that God saved me. I want to go out and let somebody else know about that power of salvation that is in the word of God. The word of God will bring joy to your heart. Read it when you're lonely. huh? Read it when you're downtrodden. Just read that word of God and it will uplift you. And then you will be able to want somebody else to know. This joy that I have, huh? that's what old song said, the world didn't give it to me. But the world didn't give it, but the world can't take it away. But I want somebody else to experience the joy that I have in Christ Jesus because then I want to sit down and teach them how good the Lord has been to me. So he sat them down. Once the ship was put, thrust out from the uh, shore a little bit where people could see him and he could see them, See, they call that interchange and reciprocation. If you reciprocate, that means that the word go out and come back to you. That's why it's good for you to say amen every now and then. So that they reciprocate. I give and you come back to me. And it gives me encouragement that I can be able to teach and to preach and do the word of God so that men, women, and boys and girls can get a greater understanding of what call that God have on your life. See, if you look at this word, you'll realize that you're a part of the of, of, of the problem or you're part of the solution. See, the word of God lets you know that you're a part of the problem or you're a part of the solution. So if you want to be a part of the growth of the church, you need to understand that you are called to follow Jesus and to follow Jesus means that you got to do what Jesus did. He went out and ministered unto people and to be able to proclaim that word of God where men, women, and boys and girls can be saved. That's what we need to understand. A uh, uh, deep water miracle. We went from shallow water uh, uh, and, and now teaching into deep water miracles. See, God, you can't get to the deep water unless you go through the shallow water. I, I think I need to understand that. Uh, we need to say that again this morning. You can't get into the deep water unless you go to the shallow water. That's why shallow water teaching is necessary for you to get ready for the deep water experiences that you will have in your life. He said, launch out into the deep. I think in that sermon I was telling you about, we said uh, uh, we, we, we need to launch out into the deep. We, 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 we're fishing in shallow waters. Shallow waters will only give us minimal uh, uh, harvest. But in order for to get the greater harvest that God has for us as a church, we need to go have some deep water fishing, deep water fishing. Uh, so 
Our lesson in verses 4 and 5 says, Now when they had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and lay down their nets for a draught. And Simon answered and said to him, Lord, we master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at that word, I will let down the net. So although Jesus addressed Simon uh, first in uh, two verses in instruction, he gave Simon and his partners, uh, he meant that he would let down the net. That was a, a plural verse of term of, of, of the word of God. And, 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 and he said that he would launch out, let down the net, go out and do what you, uh, you were trained to do. You're a fisherman. Go out. Don't give up. You are trained to be a fisherman of men. Ladies and gentlemen, we are trained every day to become fishers of men. So we need to go out and let down our nets. Don't give up on, on people when they're hurting, when they're lost out in the world. We are to go let down our nets. And then he said that God will give the increase, ain't it? Huh? We, we, we got to sow in faith, and then God will give the increase. We are to let down our nets in faith, and then God will give the increase. He said that uh, launch out into the deeps and, and, and let down down nets for a draught. Look what he said. Read into that verse. He, he, he told them to launch out into the deep, but then he prophesied their harvest. He prophesied their harvest. He said, let down your nets for a draught. He didn't say, let down your nets and maybe you'll catch something. You see, you got to go out expecting to be able to do something for the word of God in your life. If you want God to do something in your life, you got to be proactive. you got to live a life of expectation. Don't go out and say, I don't think we're going to do anything. Go out and prophesy that thing in your life. I will do great things for the Lord. I will be able to go out and do whatever. He said that when two or three come together, don't uh, let the, hop, the size of the crowd uh, diminish uh, what your expectation is. If you go out and say one, he said, heaven rejoices over one coming unto the Lord. So we can't uh, expect to go out and don't expect anything. I expect great things from the Lord. I expect people to uh, hear us even on Facebook Live. I know we're not gathering, but the word of God is going out. And he promised that his word will not go out and return void. So we got to have that expectation. He said, go out and let down your necks for the draught. And Simon said that he tall or not long, and we haven't done anything. But he said that, but nevertheless, uh, at thy word, at that word again, see, at the word of God, we, we can expect great things. At the word, I'll let that, I got to walk out on faith. I got to walk out on faith. If, if I don't, if my eyes can't see it, my ears can't hear it, I, I, I don't understand it, but I still got to be willing to walk out on faith. He told him, at thy word will I go down and let down my neck. You got to have that expectation to be able to do what the Lord told you to do. I told you about this uh, on the wall ministries. I, I told you about that. I, I, I was in between churches and, and, and I was looking. I said, Lord, I, I'm a pastor. I need a church. I, I, I went to an interview and, and, and the Lord put in my spirit to start this ministry, On the Wall Ministries. And I, and I bought the material. I jumped into it and followed God. I bought the material. Then the second interview. Oh, then the third interview. And then after a while, the interviews got to the point where it overshadowed what I heard from the Lord. Y'all listen to me this morning. That, 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 that interviews for these pastorships overshadowed the word of God that had put in my heart to be able to start this ministry here at On The Wall Ministries. Then all of a sudden, the, I asked the Lord, Lord, why is it that I went to interviews and got turned down? I went to interviews and got turned down. I went to another interview. I preached at churches all around, and no one called me to be a pastor. He said, do what I tell you to do. So what happened in obedience, I, 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 I started this ministry here. I rented the area, started the ministry, and, and, and then all of a sudden, as soon as I became obedient to the word of God, church called me, Piney Hill called me, you know, the greatest church on the hill. It called me to be their pastor. But when you operate out of obedience, God will be able to give you a draught. He'll, be, he'll increase your harvest. Well, he said that the net will not be able to hold it. He let down your nets in the draught, even when it doesn't look right. When things are going wrong in your life, still be faithful enough to let down your nets and, and allow God to give you the increase. Huh? You got to believe that this morning. 
And then look at our busting nets. Uh, verse 6, busting nets. He said, when they had done this, uh, when I obeyed God, listen to what I'm saying. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. See, when you obey God, when it doesn't sound right, when it doesn't make sense, when, when, when every option that you've tried didn't work out, you finally decided to obey God. He said that uh, they enclosed a what? A great multitude of fish. He said that he, they had toiled all night. They had gave up all hope. They started washing their nets. They had given up. And all of a sudden, when they had obeyed the word of God, he said, of what? Great multitude of fishes came in. See, I, the word is trying to help us this morning. If you have been called by God to do something, God will call you, but he will equip you. And plus, he will give you, I told you Proverbs, he'll give you a time and a chance to be able to express that calling that you have in your life, that gift that he has given in you. He, he will give you a time and a chance to do it if you operate out of obedience. Just move on his word. When God encourages you to move, move on his word. Don't allow the noise. We, we, we have a thing at work when we have tests running in the lab and, and, and those uh, tests are, 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 are failing and, and, and we call it noise. What noise is causing the problems that we're having? See, in your ministry, sometimes it's the noise, the distractions. It keeps you from focusing on what God has called you to do. Remember the interviews I told you were distractions. Uh, those, those multiple churches calling me to go out and preach were distractions to me doing what God had, had uh, uh, called me to do. He said, I uh, started this teaching ministry at On The Wall Ministries, but I allowed the distractions to be able to help to cause me to take my eyes off of what God had called me to do. Don't let the noise of the world hinder you from doing what God, that's just noise. Those are distractions to try to keep your eyes off the prize. Continue to do what God has called you to do and, and then be obedient and listen to his call and his word. And he said that a great multitude of fishes until he gave them not only what was necessary, he gave them an overflow. See, God will bless you greatly if you just be obedient to his word. Listen to the word of God. And, and if he calls you to do something that don't sound right to you, do like Peter did. He said, at thy word, I'll let down my net. At the word of God, I'll follow you. At the word of God, I'll trust you. At the word of God, I, I'll do things even though it doesn't sound right for me right now, but I'll do it because I trust God enough where I believe that if he said it, huh, he'll do it, won't he? If he said it, he'll do it. Then we're looking at sinking ships. And they began beckoning to their, par their partners in verse 7, which were in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, and they began to sink. So here we understand that when God calls you, it's not always a job to do by yourself. God has a church. You remember the prophet was, I'm the only one, ain't nobody else. He said, I got 400 prophets has not turned to Baal. He, God got a church. God got people that are out there in you, uh, in your way to be able to help you. When, when things get to the point where they, they become too great for you, God got a body of Christ. He got a body of believers that can come together and help. He says, so when, when things get so weary in your life where you don't feel like you can do it on your own, call on your brothers and sisters in Christ. They will come and help you out. He said that he beckoned unto his partners that were in the other ship and that they should come and help. Call out. Don't think that you can do everything by yourself. That's why we cannot progress as much as we can and should in the body of Christ. We got this me, 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 me instead of us. It's we, we, we. It's not me, me, me. We got to understand that we can work together. Hey, hey two is greater than one. When, hey, when one will fall, you have nobody can help you. But when two comes together and we start working together in the body of Christ, that we can be able to get the greater harvest that God. Now, how, how did you know when, I think it's John 5, 12 says that what? Greater works shall we do. You know, greater works, and you understand that. How can we do greater works than Jesus? Greater works we can do because we are working together. 
we can put together 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 people doing the same thing that we can multiply more. That's what multiplication is. Hey, one time one is one, but uh, one time five is five. Eh? Uh, two times five is 10. Uh, five times five is 25. It's multiplication. If we would do things together in the body of Christ, we will have a multiplied harvest to be able to do the greater work that God has called us to do. He said, when, when they came, they filled both ships and they began to sing. God gave them an overflow. God multiplied until they overwhelmed everything. Listen to what I'm saying. They were washing their nets, gave up all hope that when they operated in the obedience of God's word in their life, God gave them an overflow. They couldn't even handle. You can't handle what God got for your life if you start operating in the will of God. You cannot handle what God got for your ministry if you start operating in obedience to God's word. That's what our lesson is trying to get us to uh, see this morning. And we, we're called to follow him. Christ uh, multiplied. Hey, people came to him because they wanted to hear the word of God. Instead of uh, having all these programs where we're dealing with nothing about worship, nothing about getting the word of God out, we need to be able to be about our father's business, teach the word of God, preach the word of God. And once you do that, he, he, he said that all of that harvest will come glorifying God instead of glorifying you. See, that, that's our problem, man. We want the glory of God, but when you do the work of God through the word of God, God gets the glory. And when God gets the glory, he promises you what? A harvest that's above any and everything that you can ever think or imagine. Oh, ain't this good word this morning? Good word this morning. Then Simon's uh, epiphany. Uh, when, Pilate, when Simon Peter saw it, see, an epiphany is one of those uh, uh, it's uh, one of those realization of a of something that you see. You can dream it until you see it. An epiphany is one of those things that once God gets you in a place of, of of understanding who He is, He'll allow you to see it. He said, "When Peter saw it, see, when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord." See, when when you decide to see what God has for you in your life. When you let go and let God come in and he revealed that thing to you, when you began to see the goodness of the Lord, huh? when you began to see the goodness of the Lord in your life, you'll be able to do great things in your life because you'll know it's him and not you. God has great works, but he want to work through you. He just don't want you to be able to go out and expect to do all of those things on your own. See, without God, I am nothing. Without him, I'll fail. Huh? Without him, I'm like a ship without a sail. And that's what the psalmist said. We got to trust God and believe that with God, all things are possible, ain't it? Huh? With man, things are uh, uh, impossible. With God, all things are possible. We got to trust God to believe that. But when God put it in your spirit, when you can see it, Oh, 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 God, God, God can do great things when you allow God to let you see that thing in your life. And when you began to see that thing in your life, the only thing you can do is just fall down on your knees and give God glory. You know, Peter said, I, I, I am a man, a, a, a sinful man. And, you know, the one prophet says, I'm a man of what, unclean hands. I'm a man that, that doesn't have a... Uh, uh, Everything that I need right now, I, I, I'm not. I'm not in a position to say that I I need to be here. I'm not in a position to say I I I know I'm a preacher. I know that I I know I I'm a man that preached because of of God working in my life. It's not because of me. It's because of Thee. It's because of the greater work that God has for me to do in my life. I'm just a sinful man, but God is a man that can wash away all of my sins, ain't it? Huh? He can lay aside everything in my life if I was surrendered to him. So Peter humbled himself before God because he realized that, that he wasn't able to do this on his own. He wasn't able to be able to do the great work that God has called him to do. But with God, oh, we can do some great things, can't he? Then the fish's astonishment in verses uh, 9 and 10, he says what? For he was astonished that all that was with him, that the draught of the fishes that was taken. So it was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. 
uh, they were uh, all amazed at what, how God had multiplied that just by them being obedient to the word of God. See, if you would be obedient to the word of God, it will amaze you. Huh? You'll be astonished at the work that you can do. Not me. Yeah, you. You can do that great work that God has called you to do if you be obedient to the word. At your word, God, I'll let down my net. At your word, God, I'll go out into the missionary field. At that word, God, I will be able to start the ministry here at On The Wall Ministries. At your word, God. I'll be able to preach and teach. Even though we're not gathering, I'm going to broadcast every Sunday. I'm going to teach Sunday school every Sunday. I'm going to preach every Sunday. At your word, God, I'm going to be obedient and do the work that you have called me to do. Just, just at your word. And then the harvest will be expected. I'll be astonished at what God can do if I would only be obedient to his word. Verse 10b said, And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. For henceforth thou shalt catch men. Huh? Just as God called, showed him that he can be able to catch fish, even in his disbelief, even in his giving up, even in his laying aside, washing his nets, huh? getting ready to put it up for the night, getting ready to give up on everything that God has called you to do. If you do just be obedient to the word of God, we got a second chance God. We got a God that will be able to give you another chance if you will just turn and, and come to him and humble yourself before him. He said, fear not, huh? for henceforth thou shalt catch men. Just as you caught these fish, I'm going to call you to be able to go out and catch men, to be able to go out and uh, revolutionize this world. Huh? Those 12 went out and revolutionized the world. One scripture said, I think they said, the DDs, they, 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 they accused them of turning this world upside down. Can you amaze that you and I, huh? Piney Hill Baptist Church, every church that is watching this morning, you can turn this world upside down if you just be obedient to God. He's telling you to feel not, I want to make you what? Fishes of men. I want you to be able to go over and change some things, not with your power, but with the power of God's word in your life. That's how you're going to catch men. It's the word of God that draws men. And then he said that, and when they had brought the ships to land, they forsook all and they followed him. See, when God does something in your life, you're going to take away, you're going to turn away all. I, I, hey, look, I, I, I think we talked about it a little bit this morning. God called me into the ministry. I was trying to pastor a church and operate as a full-time employee as an engineer with an automotive company. It got to the point where trying to pastor a church, Bible study on Wednesday, and getting ready for Sunday worship service, I was in every airport around the world instead of being uh, uh, on Wednesday night uh, at, at, at uh, uh, Mount Obi Baptist Church. I couldn't get there on time. God put it in my spirit. He said that I left that job and I was able to sacrifice that job, but to give my life to the ministry uh, at, Piney, at Mount Open Baptist Church, I was able to uh, buy this business and buy this ministry here, uh, the facility to start this ministry here. God did that because I was obedient. I was able to follow him, not follow the money, not follow the job, not follow the, the prestige of the job that I had, but to be able to take that salary that they offered me as a pastor, start the business here at the store, and God was able to prosper us and keep us alive. And look, by the grace of God, we're the only Christian bookstore in the area that is still open, that was open when we started the business. That God said, that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, he said, all things that he will add unto you, if you just be able to operate out of these. He'll forsake everything else. I forsook that engineering job and took the ministry job seriously. And then God will be able to multiply you if you were able to just follow him. Huh? Do you believe that this morning? Huh? You got to sacrifice something in order for God to be able to multiply something in your life. Huh? You got to sacrifice, lay aside all everything that you think, everything that you, that you think you know, and to be able to listen to what God tells you to do in your life. Huh? So our conclusion is, what's my line? Huh? That was a show that used to come on, and what's my line? And it was a, a contestant would come in uh, different lines of fields, and they would come in, and someone would guess what's their 
uh, what's their occupation, huh? And did you realize that you were, you have another line of work? Do you realize that God, you, I was in any gym, but God has another line of work for me. Is to be a pastor and to teach and a preacher. God has another line for you. Out of your occupation, God still wants you to be a, a evangelist, to be able to go out and let the world know that Jesus lives today. God calls you to follow him, calls you and I to, to follow him. All those that have professed to be uh, followers of Jesus Christ, Christians, God got a call on your life to follow him, to be able to become fishers of men, to be able to draw people out of their sinful lust of the world, and to be able to come and repent. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let people know that, that, that they're being called to be able to go out and let others know about the goodness of the Lord. Great lesson this morning. Great lesson. Our lesson this morning says that followers of Jesus fish for people. Followers of Jesus fish for people. So I want to encourage you this morning, start fishing. Start fishing. Start getting somebody else that have, have, have given up and, and, and don't have any other avenue to go. Let them know that hey, Jesus is there for them to be able to bring them out of their situation and to be able to do the great works God called you. The great lesson this morning. Hope that each of you enjoyed it this morning. Come back for our uh, 10 o'clock hour for our worship service. And we hope that you will continue to pray for the kingdom of God, for the body of Christ. Uh, pray that we will be able to come together as one nation to lay aside all of our differences and be able to come together to be that people that will be able to go out and bring others to Christ. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We pray, Lord, that you would just now help us to be able to become those fishers of men whereby we'll be able to bring in the greater harvest that people's lives will be saved, burdens be lifted, huh? that, that they will be set free from the, the, what bound them and to be able to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and to all of those who don't know. Lord, we thank you today and we praise you. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Let us pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again uh, next week at our Sunday school hour, but come back again at 10 o'clock for our morning worship service. We got a Word from the Lord this morning. We'll see you then. Be blessed.